Welcome. All right, let's go ahead and um, get our city council regular session meeting minute uh, started Tuesday, January 16th, 2024 at seven o'clock. Um, welcome to Zoom. Uh, we had a little glitch at the work session, but we worked it out and uh, here we are. Um, just as a reminder, we uh, do not have the chat feature, um, but if you do have a comment or question, please use the raise hand feature and we will call on you um, as, as, as we go on. So um, with that, um, I'm, because we're not in person, I'm going to dispense, I'm just going to dispense with the Pledge of Allegiance and then go into roll call. And I know this evening, uh, Lori is not with us, but I think Bill is uh, standing in for Lori, correct? Or Andy? I'm not sure. <laughs> I've got the book in front of me, Mayor. So Okay, good. All right. So Andy, um, roll call? Yeah. Councillor Martinez? Here. Sorry. Oh. Thank you. Councillor Sheldon? Here. Councillor Smith? Here. Councillor Kendall? Here. Councillor Phage? Here. Councillor Papin? Here. And Mayor Linehan? Here. Also. Yep. You. Thank you. Item five is our consent agenda. And um, I am going to, uh, we, we're going to remove um, 7A, the presentation, um, the continued discussion of downtown design options. That was our work session. We'll remove that. And we also will remove 13A, the executive session, and reschedule that for uh, February 5th. So with those two um, omissions, um, are there any um, updates or um uh, comments about the city council minutes, any corrections that we need to be aware of. <coughs> All right. Mayor. Hearing none. Yes. I move to uh, 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 accept the agenda as presented with the deletion for tonight. Second. All right. Councilor <coughs> Kendall with a first, Councilor Martinez with a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Terry, none. Any abstentions? I'll be abstaining as I wasn't at last meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Papin. All right, motion carried. Um, item six in our agenda is public comment. This is the time where we wish the public, we want to encourage the public actually to speak to us on items not on our agenda. And at this time, do we have anyone here for public comment or has public comment been submitted via email, Andy? Not that I've received in advance, Mayor. Okay. Um, is there anyone on the call that wishes to speak during public comment? All right. Let the record show. Uh, no one is um, speaking during the public comment this evening. Thank you. Um, on to, well, this is our staff night. Uh, staff report um, evening. And first up, we have Robin for the library report. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. If you Before you start, um, there's someone with iPhone 65. Is there a way that you can mute yourself? Any chance? Just for now? Thank you. All right. Great. Thank you. Uh, Robin, I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Counselors. Um, You've seen my report, and uh, you also, I think, got a year-end highlight summary from Andy with some uh, library items in there, of some highlights for 2023. And right now, we're focused on um, trying to figure out when we can reopen, uh, when it will be safe to do so. I mean, I'm conferring with staff scheduled for tomorrow. It looks like libraries are... Um, some libraries are doing a late opening tomorrow. Uh, some are closing. And so I'm just staying on top of that 
uh, and communicating um, with staff, WCCLS, and the public to make sure everyone knows. I want to just commend Public Works for doing a nice job of keeping the sidewalks clear around City Hall and the library. I did go in for a few hours today. Um, and since this is uh, Chief Haxton's last night, the library just wanted to thank him for his service and all his collaboration with the library. Uh, we, when Chief Haxton first started, he made sure to come to library events and programs. We had, you know, picnic bingo. He's been a guest at Storytime. We've collaborated on National Night Out, and um, we really appreciate it and wish him all the best. So I just wanted to. Uh, say that and I'm open to any questions. Any counselors with comments or questions for Robin? All right. Thank you, Robin. Certainly appreciate it. And I'm also excited for Brianna to be able to go uh, to Columbus uh, in April. So that'll be a good opportunity for her. So I'll have to pop in and say congrats to her. Thank you. Yes, that's wonderful. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, you bet. All right. Next up is Public Works. Um, Dustin. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Can you see me and hear me okay? Yes, there you are. Well, I submitted my report. Um, I don't have too many changes except for the weather events that we've been having uh, this week. And uh, the Public Works crew came in on Saturday, prepared, ready to um, to get some of the, the 8 to 12 inches of snow that were originally forecasted, but it kind of got only about an inch. Uh, but we were, we were prepared. Um, and, uh, it's kind of like today, um, um, crews are preparing for the, the ice storm that we're getting currently right now and banks. I know right now we got a lot of, a lot of ice. It's kind of dangerous. I recommend people do not leave their houses, um, if they do not have to, um, I do have my guys coming in tomorrow morning, um, fairly early, probably about six to six 30. Um, but before the, the morning rush, I don't think there's going to be too much of a rush tomorrow morning, but they're going to put some gravel on some of the major intersections um, to help a little bit. Um, but there's not a whole lot we can do with ice. Yeah, so I've been leaving that. I'm leaving at six thirty to go to Intel. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. I'll probably be the only guy there. Well, there's not a lot we can do with ice, and we don't have a stockpile of salt or anything. And magnesium chloride doesn't work in the rain, uh, so we'll we'll do with what we can. Uh, just hope people drive safe and slow. Uh, but other than that, I don't have anything uh, much more to report than what I had already um, written down for y'all, unless you have any other questions. Question? Councilor Kendall. Yeah, Dustin, yes. Uh, after this frost is gone and everything's thawed out, uh, I think you'll probably be surprised by how many broken water lines that, that will be probably have to touch the off at the street, but uh, it's unfortunate. We're lucky we have had no uh, no lack of power, so uh, that's been a good thing. So anyway, I think you. I'd like to see what what the report is to, when it happens next month to see how well people were prepared. Uh, hopefully, we don't have, uh, have too any. many breaks. <laughs> right, you're right on. And I want to say thank you for the uh, excellent job of leaf pickup. This this year was by far the best I've seen. Um, normally, you know, uh, it's the, either, either they start too early or, or something and they have a bunch of leaves just clogging up everything. This, this year has been, has been really nice. Thanks. Was that expensive? Um, Was that hard to do or? No, I mean, actually, I, I wish I could take a lot of the credit for the leaf pickup this year, but I listened to what the crew was saying that they thought they needed in the city. Um, and so I, I wouldn't say I gave them free reign to do it how they wanted to, but we were trying um, to do what would best work for them and the city. And we hardly got any complaints. And if we did, it was more of like, well, we just were there. We'll come back the next time uh, than mm -hmm. anything. And so it it worked out. I think we're going to just make some minor tweaks next year. But I think it as long as it keeps on working this way, we'll keep on doing something like this as long as the guys... Uh, suggest uh, uh, things that work. 
Excellent. Hopefully you guys kept the uh, schedule or notes or of like of like how it worked to get a BKM or best known method of it because this one was actually really nice. Yeah. Any other comments or questions for Dustin? I have one, uh, and it's related to something that's in his report, and that's something that's related to the lead uh, inventory. And I was just going to ask if there's, you know, I, there's probably a lack of records in this city, I would think. But uh, is there any, do you have any idea of what that, what that might look like in even a percentage of how much pipe would be affected in, in our jurisdiction? One of the things I was able to do on Saturday while the crew was working uh, was to be actually fine tune the report. And actually, I, ha I have it right here and I was going to show it to you in person <laughs> um, tonight. But we have um, 247 homes that are pre-1986 builds. So we'll have to kind of check, physically check those um, those homes. There are 22 properties that are kind of unknown. And so that, that gives us a total of about 269 houses that we'll have to check. Um, and there are about 347 plus homes that are built after 1986. And we don't really have to worry about that because they kind of uh, follow after the, um, the federal regulations. Um, and so one of the other things I was working with uh, my crew is a plan on how to um, quickly and efficiently address, um, because all we have to do is inventory these. We don't have to change anything out. And we'll probably work on a two crew system um, with um, one crew going in and doing the inventory and updating G GIS kind of uh, things as, as they're doing it with a crew behind them uh, doing some uh, just kind of minor cleanup and restoration. Um, and hopefully I can get all this done within the next three or four months, um, just kind of depending on what our work yeah. schedule is. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping to get maybe five or so a day, maybe, hopefully. Okay, that's what I was interested in. I I know it can sometimes be a heavy lift and I didn't know what okay. the burden really was. So I was interested. Yeah, yeah there's 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 a lot of um, things. Uh, I know Javier had put his input on how, how you know, one way we can do this to make it efficiently. And I, I try to, to listen to my guys' comments as much as possible. Good. Thank you. Dustin, thank you again. Um, uh, and thank you for the crew for coming in over the weekend um, and, you know, doing the sidewalks and just being prepared. Um, be, be safe tomorrow, you know, um, and certainly the guys will be safe coming in as well. So thank you. Appreciate you. You're welcome. All right. Any other comments or questions for Dustin? Okay, thank you. Um, moving on to community development monthly report. Is Steve? Mayor, Steve's not on. I'm happy okay. to answer any questions in, on, him, on his behalf. Um, so the only things I would add was would be, uh, well, to echo what everyone else has said, I've been really just super pleased with how Public Works has done their job the last week and leaf pickup, I will agree, went really well and they're a good group of individuals and they work well together. So um, really appreciative of, of them and the whole whole department. Um, on the land use side, we've been hearing word that we should be expecting a couple land use applications for a couple of commercial properties sometime early this year. So we're hoping those those bear fruit. Um, I think the food cart was planning to trying to open this week downtown at the corner of West Union and Commercial, but I'm sure the weather <laughs> kind of created some some issues there. But um, that area is ready to go, and he's ready to have more um, carts open there. And as I think you would have seen in Steve's report, the, I think the planning commission finally came to some resolution on the sign code that had been going through the last several months. They had a, one or two more tweaks, but that can just be done um, through uh, through an email. Uh, I think with with the chair, they just had one last thing to follow up on. 
And then I'll leave this to Steve, but I think they want to schedule a joint work session between the Planning Commission and the City Council to go over some of those issues and then maybe other um, kind of sort of comprehensive plan issues, whether that's downtown um, zoning or looking at infill rezoning and things like that. Just some of the, the different issues the Planning Commission has been talking about over the last um, several months we would be good to bring forward to the city council in a joint work session because some of these would be policy issues that ultimately, if you're talking about a zone change, the council approves that. So just having those discussions. So I think that will be something to look out for um, here soon. I have one question. Councilor Smith. Um, where are we at on far west? That hasn't come up in about a year now, I think. Are they still on track to do something or? Yeah, they, uh, I could probably have you this answer in 10 minutes when I go back and look at some notes from 3J, but we had just talked about it at our last meeting two weeks ago. Um, their, their engineering of the site is taking a long time. As a matter of fact, I think they're ready to come in with the um, the back the backside, not, not the front side, the logistics center, the backside. I think they're ready to come forward with a land use application there because they got some of the wetland environmental issues finally sorted out with that. As for the front side, the logistics or the warehouse, I think they were still just going through some of the public improvement plans and 3J has given them a load of red line comments. And I'm sure the county has too, since that's the county road, but it's still moving forward. They're just kind of taking some time figuring out the some of the public improvement issues they'll need to, to sort through. But I know that uh, Brian, the engineer, and probably Dustin as well from time to time is in contact with them. So things are still moving forward there, but um, it, it's, not, it's not us that's holding that up. Um, Andy, I had a question about the his miscellaneous. Under, under miscellaneous, um, you know, there's discussion about the business license and then home occupation. And, and um, I'm just wondering, how um, how do new businesses know that they need a business license? Or, or you know, I see that JT West Coast Gutter, they came in, they were notified, they came in, they took care of it. But the other home occupation um, issue that Steve has been dealing with, um, it's like, I'm kind of wondering, is there is there something that we can be doing better to communicate with people about home occupation or new businesses, and this is what you need, is there something that we can be doing to increase communication or something for who are opening businesses and stuff? Well, I would add something. I, I can tell you right now that it's a business's responsibility to do the due diligence, to understand I'm, what you're doing business and what those regulations are. And I, I have a question about this, and 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 maybe this is in line with what the mayor's thinking is. I don't want to mess around with these people. Uh, for one one four four zero Northwest Gordon, it looks to me like we need to get a little aggressive, and I'm fine being aggressive. I I don't know what the mechanism is to enforce what needs to be enforced, but we better start enforcing. It. That's what I think. And mm -hmm. that would have been my comment to Steve, which is maybe more appropriate to you. And sorry to step on your toes, Madam Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. Because I know that I've read this before and I just thought, well, you know, what can we do? Is there anything that we can be doing differently? Yeah. And maybe enforcement a little stronger. And and what kind of teeth do we have for like enforcement? I mean, that's, I, I'm not even clear on that. Well, I, I don't think the council needs to do anything to follow up here. Staff has been handling this, and there's been a few home occupation um, issues over the last year and some some other, you know, businesses that have, you know, created minor conflicts. This gutter one was actually resolved fairly, fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and they were very, very amenable to to making some changes. But yeah, this is one that Steve's been dealing with for a while. And I think he said he would give them until after the holidays to make some changes. Um, so I'll follow up with him tomorrow. Obviously, there's, the weather hasn't helped doing some on-site 
uh, follow up there. But uh, yeah, it, for something like that, there are ways to advance to the next level. Um, you know, I, I don't think we're going to jump right to putting a lien on a property or anything. But one of the issues that's going to happen with that uh, property is um, you need to be covering up uh, materials that are that are uncovered if they're related to a business. And that means, well, if you create a structure for it, that area is pretty close to the floodplain. So are you going to have a floodplain issue? So they've got some issues that they would need to sort out, probably doing starting with the property survey to see where they can place these things. So these are some of the things that Steve has communicated to them. There is a language barrier there. So he's trying to be, I think, um, you know, do, do that carefully that way that they're trying to understand some of the rules and regulations there, but I'll, I'll follow up with him tomorrow and make sure we get a report back to council on how things are progressing with that particular property. All right. what, are, what are the uh, mechanisms for, for that? Do we send them a letter and then what, what actually happens? And do you need anything from this to give you more tools to do, to do something? Andy? No, nothing from the city council. You know, we, we try to be, you know, business friendly to a point, not to where things are getting taken advantage of or screening conflicts with neighbors. Um, you know, this particular property, they could run into issues with either the county or uh, clean water services if they're storing materials or stockpiling something um, in a floodplain, especially during the winter. So we, we have some of the mechanisms in place. Um, try to start with just conversations, maybe a couple, again, if someone, if there's a language barrier there, so they kind of understand, um, city code, but when it comes to escalating beyond that, um, issuing letters, it's, it's there in code and, you know, we'll work with the city attorney to make sure that they, um, comply. Um, and it kind of, you know, just handle it, uh, case by case, if we have to do, you know, something to their property or, you know, do some sort of report with the secretary of state and someone that has a, a registered business, you know, a construction business with the state. Those are some of the tools that we have to use. And then they would get a, you know, a cease and desist until they comply with a local regulation. Okay, thanks. So thanks, let me follow up with Steve and then we'll, we'll report back for y'all. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, all right. Item 8D, finance report. Bill. Thank you, Mayor. Um, let's see. I don't. Um, you have the report there. I don't. I don't want to get too lost in the weeds about anything. Um, in particular, for the most part, um, our operating funds um, are basically right at or below budget um, for where it could be to this point. It's kind of similar to what I report month to month, but um, departments are pretty responsible with monitoring and um, and expenditures. Basically, um, we had a few accounting coding errors um, that will modify with some journal entries. So if it does show, I, and I know where it looks like something might be going over budget compared to current, um, we've identified just something has been miscoded um, and we need to, or there's a budget error and we just need to fix it. But there's not spending up over and above um, what's budgeted or in addition to what the intent of the budget is um, by council. So um kind of the big changes for the report really are that with all of the implementation of the new water rates um kind of boiling down all those to the existing new commercial um, rates in particular versus residential rates um, we're able now as we did for the first time here to report the aging uh, water account um, information by residential accounts detail versus commercial and irrigation accounts detail um, and we don't show a lot of um, uh, accounts over uh, 60 days aging. So we're doing pretty well um, in that regard, but we'll be able to kind of provide detail on residential versus commercial. And as, and as you can see in this report and what you'll probably see moving forward more often than not is that commercial accounts who individually use much more water frequently, um, that if, when they go over, they go over by much more account due. So we'll see probably more on the commercial side moving forward than residential. Um, it's, it's Bill, the, can I interject for just a second on page 2449? May, may or you may. The so, water fund, 210 summary. There's a wonky number in there. Like, yeah. Yeah. Extra uh, zero. 
I know I, I, I didn't catch that until later. It's $908,122 of revenue. And the correct number is in the, the bar chart at the very bottom. There was, an extra, there was an extra zero in, a, um, in the, the number in the paragraph. So good catch. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, it is the end of December. End of December marks, marks six months into the fiscal year. So this report does include summaries for all of the capital funds. Um, kind of the biggest thing about that was, of course, the TDT credit that was verified and awarded to um, Lennar for various Bryn Hill improvements, transportation related improvements. Um, so moving forward as they permit new homes, um, when the time comes to charge them a TDT, we'll assess a TDT, but we'll credit it against the total credit balance um, that we made official with, with Lennar um, a couple of months ago. So they'll just work that credit amount down um, with homes that they build moving forward. Um, let's see, anything else? I guess the the one one last thing detail and I kind of mention it um, and I want to talk a little bit about it and that is that um, if you got to the end of the report you noticed that there was news that Wednesday we learned that a check of ours that we sent to a vendor to pay for um, services rendered and on time I might add um, that vendor's commercial they're in a business park in another city here in the Portland metro region their their commercial mailbox was broken into and stolen and our check to make payment on the on our account with them uh the perpetrator stole successfully modified and cashed <clears throat> pardon me cashed that check it the total on it was just was just under fifty four hundred dollars so it wasn't one of our very large checks but it wasn't a small one either um so we as soon as we learned wednesday we got in contact with our bank we got in contact with the vendor to ask um, you know, have you turned this into law enforcement? You know, can you give us information so that we can um, go to law enforcement on our side as well, as well as work with our bank on getting the money back? Um, and we just heard over the weekend from City of Tualatin Police Department. So we're following up on that. Um, the bank we're having, we're getting enrolled in an extra service with the bank that basically any checks at all that come in um, from another bank where a cash was where a check was deposited by a vendor we paid when when those checks reach our bank there's going to be an additional verification layer um, of the recipient of that check given some new reporting that we're going to give the bank every month we're basically going to give them a full check register of all the checks that we print um, at every AP batch and our bank is going to go for is going to move forward with this new service and will verify all of the recipients. Um, they have not been doing that before and they have not been working off of any check register of ours directly, but they will be moving forward. Um, so we'll likely have that implemented for the next advanced, uh, excuse me, next accounts payable um, batch. The bank also said that they've already put in request for the funds to be returned from the bank that cashed the check um, that uh, the, our bank let us know that will take a few weeks, but we'll get that money back. And so we'll be operating within the new system with the bank um, and have the money back in a few weeks. We'll, we'll be operating within the system extremely soon, the new system, but we'll be getting the money back in a few weeks. So that's the current status of, of that situation. Did somebody have a question? I can't believe the bank changed a commercial check. It wasn't deposited into another account that's traceable. Well, we well we have we have a copy of the check um, that that was cashed, and the the forger was experienced. I mean, he kind of did a good job, frankly. Um, but yeah, um, his bank cashed the check, and we got that check back. Our bank heritage got that check, and we were able to get that copy to to verify what had happened. I think. More than anything, we're we're, dis we're 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 rather disappointed that our service provider didn't let us know that there was a mailbox robbery. Right. This was back. This was back around Halloween. Um, we just found this out Wednesday that their mailbox was robbed. They claimed to us that us reaching out to them was the first that they had heard of 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 a robbery of their of their 
mailbox. It's, it's kind of bizarre. So mm -hmm. this is the first time I'm aware of that us of us experiencing this, experiencing anything like this. I've I've been here four years, so we're talking at least four years. We haven't seen anything like this, so it's it's just a matter of additional vigilance vigilance against fraud. Mayor, make one comment. Yes, please. Bill, uh, mm -hmm. kudos to you for for digging into this. I think people on the other end. A lot of people today don't give a DAM, excuse my French, about, you know, they just don't do their job, in my opinion. That's it just, people just, just don't care. So thank you for what, you, what you've what you done, okay? Uh, well, thank you, Councilor Kendall. I guess I guess we'll we'll see how the new system operates. Right. They, they have a temporary system in place to give us, we have to mm -hmm. verbally author, until the new system is in place, we have to verbally authorize every single payment okay. of a check moving forward. And they call us every day and we have to verbally authorize. The funny thing is that this current temporary system, they call with a check number and an amount, but they don't, the bank calls me with a check number and an amount for me to authorize, but they don't know who the payee is. So this current temporary security system they've put in place wouldn't protect us from that forgery because we oh. would need to see the person on the, we would need to see the name on the check that went through um, and was attempted to be deposited. So it's kind of bizarre. The bank's temporary safeguards really don't protect us from what the problem was, but this new system will. Um, so we're, we're looking forward to that. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? Bill, congratulations on four years, by the way. Thank you. Appreciate really it. Really appreciate your work. Yep. Thank I appreciate you, you. you and, and appreciate your work. Um, and so I'm glad you're on our team. Thank you. Hey, thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Absolutely. Good. All right. Let's move down to item number 8E, the police department. Um, Chief Haxton. Hey. Good evening. Good evening. Well, uh, I guess first off, let's talk about a couple things that happened this last week. It's not really um, in the report because it happened really kind of afterwards. Uh, you may have heard on last Wednesday afternoon, uh, there was a bunch of police activity in North Plains. And uh, just give you a heads up, there was a, a subject that was wanted who eluded police, kind of near Cornelius-ish. And they were able to find him, uh, track him into the city where he he uh, ditched a vehicle and then uh, fled into a, a neighboring business uh, where he was apprehended. So that's what all that buzz was last uh, last uh, Wednesday. Uh, so that worked out pretty well. And that was Washington County that did that. Did uh, Radar find him? Say that again? Did Radar find him? Oh, <laughs> I, I don't think so. That's uh. a good question. Uh, I don't know. Uh, he didn't have any whipped cream in his pocket, so exactly. <laughs> uh, Might have got a good reward after that one if it was him. <laughs> um, and then, uh, unfortunately, maybe not a lot of people knew about it, but uh, we had an armed robbery here last uh, Sunday uh, at a at a local business uh, where he got away with some money and brandished firearms. Luckily, uh, no one was injured. Uh, it's very unusual for North Plains. Uh, that something like that would happen. Um, they're working on detectives. Are, uh, a detective has been assigned to it, and it's an ongoing investigation, so I don't have a lot of details that I can push out. I just wanted to make sure you're aware of it. Uh, North Plains is kind of small, and, and there might have been some uh, word that's traveled. So um, unlike what happened on Wednesday, where there's a lot of police activity, you may not have seen it as much, because if I'm not mistaken, Sunday was a little snowy, uh, and a lot fewer people were out and about. So... Uh, but that happened uh, Sunday evening, probably about uh, 8 o'clock, 8.15. So that's kind of the, the happenings of this last week, uh, which isn't really what we want, but uh, we can start talking about uh, December. Uh, so if you look at December, uh, again, there's a lot of stats this month, but uh, in December, it looks like the public demand calls were were we're really the lowest it's been in the last five years. Uh, on one hand, that's very good, but I can tell you it's definitely noticeable of 
of the officers that are working the city. They're they're uh, they are realizing that it's it's been a bit slower, which again I think is good for the city. Now, also, as you uh, stroll through, uh, this was also uh, the end of the quarter, so you've got the quarterly stats as well, um, which boils down to uh, the, the quarterly stats. The real thing, like I said, that I care about is public demand. Uh, and in the city, we're we're holding right at about average for the quarter, even though uh, December was down. Uh, and then you also have a kind of a map of the hours of the day for the for the last quarter. Uh, and the, again, most of the calls and the things that are happening are right in the time that we have service. Uh, so I think that's good. In addition to that, you've got a map there. And the map is over the last six months, uh, kind of like a uh, a biannual map, and that kind of gives you the idea of, of kind of where some of the hot spots of crimes been and the type of crimes that are there. Uh, nothing to note there other than uh, the good part is south of 26 is not North Plains because that looks like there's a lot of dots there. Uh, so that is all county, not North Plains. Uh, but really, other than that, it's just kind of uh, just kind of sporadic with with a few of the thefts throughout the, the last six months. Um, I have a hard time seeing those those green dots. Where are those south of 26? That's a good question because I've got a black and white map. But some of that has got to do with uh, some thefts and, and some crashes. And I think one of those has to do with, uh, I don't know if it's a robbery or a uh, something of that effect. Because if you remember, some of those, some of that kind of things have happened. And that's mostly right there at that AM, PM or the ARCO. It's right there off of beach. Traffic crash is what the legend says. Yeah. Property. Yeah, I'm too old to see that. I, I zoomed in quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, kind of the year-end wrap-up. Uh, and it's got, you know, our public demands in the in the city for the year of, are, are down a bit. Again, it's still within the means, but it's still lower than it's been uh, for the last four years. So again, that's that's good for the city. Uh, that is what I have for stats. Uh, but what I want to do really is uh, just a reminder, uh, Deputy Schutz, he's still recovering. The good news with him is he's been uh, released to light duty. So we won't see him in the city yet because he's not fully recovered, but the sheriff's office will be able to have some light duty for him as he continues to, to work his hand and his wrist to, to get his strength back up so that hopefully here before too long, he'll be um, coming back to work. And then I guess there's a little bit of changes going on in North Plains. Um, most of you know, this is my last, uh, my last month or my last city council meeting. Uh, and I just really, I want to say it's been an honor and a privilege to be able to serve the city of North Plains. It's been terrific and um, it's really been an experience. I'm super happy to be here. Um, so uh, thank you very much. Chief, I uh, want to express my um, sincere uh, gratitude for you and your leadership and being here uh, for us for the last several years. Um, I do have a, um, a proclamation that I'd like to read, uh, recognizing you and your service here in North Plains. And then I believe um, after that, um, I'd like to open it up and let counselors be able to provide you with their thoughts. And then I believe um, we will be then swearing in our new um, chief, Nick, Nick Jones. Um, so I'll go ahead and read our proclamation first, um, if I can. Um, so um, recognizing Police Chief James Haxton on January 16th, 2024. Whereas J Chief James Haxton has worked to protect and serve with the Washington County Sheriff's Office for over 22 years. And whereas Chief Haxton has served as the Chief of Police for the City of North Plains since March 2021. And whereas Chief Haxton has served the city and its residents professionally and with integrity during his entire tenure 
tenure with the city and during that time has made North Plains a safer and more livable city. And whereas the city is grateful for the service of Chief Haxton, and whereas the city would accordingly like to publicly recognize and thanks James Haxton for his exemplary service to our community. And now therefore be it proclaimed that the city of North Plains hereby expresses its deep appreciation for the dedication of Chief James Haxton to the citizens of North Plains and we wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavor. And I just wanna say congratulations on your new role uh, at the county. I think that uh, they are going to, uh, they're definitely the benefactor to your leadership and um, your personality and all of the above. But I know that uh, you will be greatly missed here in North Plains and thank you. And I'd like to open it up to the rest of the council if anyone wishes to share their thoughts with uh, Chief Haxton. I'd like to uh, thank you as well, especially for being around the kids. The kids, uh, you you have a great demeanor. You're very attentive, and you're and you're there for them, which is nice because they're the next generation, and they're gonna have a good involvement, and they're gonna see police in a very positive manner. So thank you for that. Also, I'm quite happy that we are part of the county where our employees, the uh, police officers, have a chance to explore their uh, their career and get to do new things. So you leaving as a whole is a really nice thing because you get to do other things besides be police chief of North Plains. There's an entire field, a career field to play in. And uh, I'm glad that we are part of that where our officers get to have career growth. So thanks for, uh, thanks for your leadership. Thanks for your leadership with the children. And thanks for um, your leadership with the other officers and letting them know that there is a career path. Thanks. Anyone else? I'll speak up. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being around. It's been nice to meet you and have conversations with you. And I think you've all, you've been to everybody's house and had discussions with them on certain items. And it's nice that uh, you do get to move up and you're not pigeonholed in one spot for a long time. Um, that means you've done your duties to be recognized by Washington County Sheriff's Department to move up, which is also great. And uh, it's just been nice knowing you. And it's quite nice. One of the nice things was that you showed up to a lot of the city events to be recognized by the, the people in the city. And... Good luck. Jim? Mayor? Yes. Yeah, okay. Jim, yeah, thanks for all you've done. Everybody's pretty much took all the, anything I wanted to say away. Uh, there's only uh, one thing, one comment I'd like to make. <laughs> uh, you're the only police chief that probably did his job in all the years that I've been here in the city that done their job diligently because you're the only one that gave me a warning. All the other police chief that I've had over the 40 years never <laughs> gave me one. So <laughs> you you go out with a legacy. <laughs> hey, hey, Thank let's you. let's not encourage that. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say it. I just had to say it. He did his job. He did his job. <laughs> I deserved it. <laughs> he could look the other way, but he did. He took <laughs> care of it. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. <laughs> He's definitely an eagle eye in those school zones. I'll tell you, when I drive by him in the morning, yeah. I'm always like, oh, my foot is off the gas, right? <laughs> I'm coasting <laughs> to Gordon. <laughs> I came from the school. That's where I came from. So. <laughs> Council. <Kudos. Pickett. laughs> Thank you. Well, Chief Axon, I am so happy for you on your next endeavors and uh, Chief Jones, I hope you know you have big shoes to fill and um, hopefully we'll all get warnings as well if you ever pull us over. 
Um, <laughs> but truly, Chief Hoxton, I um, am so happy for you. And I know um, you have made a lasting impact on the kids in the community. And I know my kids will see a, a patrol car drive by and they still remember you coming to our house to introduce yourself. Um, and they're like, there's the chief, there's the chief. So um, just know that you had an impact and I really appreciate um, your willingness to listen and to problem solve. And while I hope I get to see you again, I also hope I don't ever get to see you again in, in a professional setting at least. So <laughs> best of luck. Yeah, I think just echoing what everyone said, you know, I was really nervous when Chief Baker was leaving, but you came in and you really did like surpass some big shoes that were filled. And of course, appreciate everything. I I feel the same sentiments with even my kiddos who are a little more nervous and shy, but they'll see your car in the morning and they're like, there's Chief Hoxton and they, they know it. And so I just think that's really cool in our community to see that and congratulations on your new position and looking forward to um, maybe meeting Officer Jones. All right, anyone else? I'll speak. Uh, Chief Axton, I think uh, in my mind, you do exemplify uh, honestly, the professional side of a very positive Im Im image of police and policing, it, it just the uh, interest in the engagement in the community uh, shows a bit of uh, passion, not just for the job, but for where you're at and where you're stationed. And obviously, we're a part of the journey, as James mentioned. I think it's a good thing. And uh, I don't think otherwise this city could afford to have the level of professionalism that we do uh, by having our own department. I mean, we can work towards that, right? But we're, we're, we're definitely uh, a partner. And I think uh, you're gonna serve uh, the county well and yourself well, and I think you're well represented. So you certainly given uh, everything we would expect and more. And I, I just, I appreciate that. I know that constituents that, that I interface with appreciate that because at the end of the day, they're looking just for somebody to be able to honestly engage with, and and uh, so I think that that that's that is is the essence, and I think you you did it well. So uh, best of luck uh, going forward. I'm sure you won't have too many problems, uh, and I think you'll uh, lead well. So very good, thank you. Well, thank you very much to all of you. Um, I think you guys are being way too kind. Uh, I don't know if that's because you have to, because it's recorded on public, on the city council thing. But uh, I do appreciate it. Um, again, it's super, super nice. Um, really, I'm just looking around, going, "Is it me you're talking about?" Because that's it uh, doesn't, doesn't really sound like me. Uh, it's not my own ears. But uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, and really, what I hope to do is, I, I hope that I did right by uh, North Plains. That's that was my whole goal, and, and to put North North Plains first. That was uh, really that's my mission. So hopefully that was accomplished. Uh, and boy, it was nice getting to meet everybody else as well. And it's not like I'm not going to be in North Plains because there is King Tortoise still, uh, and and Cup of Yo. So there's the two draws uh, to, to come to North Plains on a regular basis. So I'm uh, really thrilled to have had the opportunity to. Uh, to really work for the city, and I really appreciate it. Um, what I can tell you is, is Nick's awesome. Uh, I think he's going to far surpass me, um, and he's going to do a tremendous job. And I'm excited for for the city, to be honest. So again, again, thank you, and you guys are way too nice. I love your sense of humor, <laughs> but <laughs> we are sincere, and it's all true. So, but nice. Uh, um, segue into um, Nick Jones, and I think um, so. At this time, I think I need to turn this over to Andy. Um, Andy, are you swearing uh, Nick in, or is Chief Axton? So and... I've been swearing at Jim. Uh, no, no. Oh, are you I'm swearing at Jim? <laughs> no, City Hall will be a much quieter place without him, and we'll miss that. It, it'll be like. When my children go off to college, you're like, why is it so quiet here? No, that's why. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You'll be missed, Jim. 
it's been great having you as part of the team the last few years. I think everyone would agree. Um, well, Mayor, I, I thought, um, yeah, we can, um, Nick is the one that will be doing the, the swearing in, but maybe he could take a couple minutes and tell the council a bit about himself and what it attracted him to this, um, what he's about to, to get into. I, I sent out a little, a uh, bit of a bio to council, I think a week or two ago, but um, here's Nick in the in the virtual flesh. It's too bad we couldn't have done it in person, but there'll be plenty of time in the future for that. So Nick, if you're comfortable with that, maybe tell him a bit about, about yourself and then we can get to the, the swearing in part. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, good evening, everybody, mayor and city council. It's nice to see faces. I've heard names and met a few of you, but it's nice to kind of see everybody's face together. So um, yeah, my name is Nick Jones. I've worked at the sheriff's office a little over 10 years now. Um, been a sergeant for a little over well, about two and a half years or so. Um, I actually was the first assigned to the city uh, at the beginning of the contract with the sheriff's office back in 2019. I served uh, about three months before I promoted to corporal there in the city of uh, North Plains. So that was kind of my first taste of it. Um, I really enjoyed my time there, just kind of the close knit type community feel where, you know, it's nice to drive by and get, you know, people that are actually waving with all five fingers at you and happy to see you and, and <laughs> smiling faces. And so uh, it always felt like kind of a welcome place uh, and kind of just felt a comfortable place to serve and, and be part of the community professionally. So uh, I look forward to being back there and, and serving as the chief. Um, and a, just a brief, like my supervisory history, just with the county, I currently the team leader for our crisis negotiation unit. Um, and I've also had a little bit of experience supervising the cities of Banks and Gaston, those contract deputies as well. So mm-hmm. I've gotten a little bit of exposure working with some municipalities in that capacity. And I really enjoyed that. And I look forward to being here with North Plains. Well, Nick, we look forward to uh, having you um, lead us through. Um, and uh, I know that we uh, had a great opportunity to to sit down and have coffee together. And it was nice to get to know you even better. So uh, looking forward to your style, your leadership. And, um, you know, everyone here usually um, has something to say and something to share. And I think you're going to enjoy yourself here. Fingers crossed. Thank you. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah, you bet. So procedurally, if we were in council, we would, you know, do the whole swearing in and things like that, but, but we still need to do that. Um, and I think Andy, um, I'm turning this over to you to make that happen. Okay. Correct? Mm-hmm. Or is it- it's yeah. a pretty nice experience. <clears throat> it's a pretty nice experience to have the uh, swearing in in front of people and all that. Uh, is over Zoom is loses a little bit of a little bit of luster for Nick. Uh, <laughs> do we need to do that now, or should, can we can we wait until next meeting so he could be there and get his picture taken with everybody and the mayor and all that? Do you, did you want to have that for Nick, or maybe we could do it now and then do it again? How's that? I mean, I don't want to take away. Uh, a little uh, check mark that's what he might 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 have. I think it's nice. The photo op, well, yeah, yeah the he, photo op and all that stuff. As a as a, a county contract employee, he and he will still have the ability to uh, patrol North Plains, whether he's sworn in as a as a chief or not. Um, I assume Axton, uh, but. It, it's it's the will of the council. If you want to make this, you know, uh, wait two weeks and make this an opportunity for a photo op, um, Nick, that's certainly fine with me. And I get out of the awkwardness of having to read it. Um, I think we, I think we, Nick, for I, I think it'd be nice for Nick to have that experience. Well, and I also want to make sure, like procedurally, like <laughs> you know, um, yeah, does it matter? Does it? I, does it does it matter procedurally? No. No, he he'd be able to okay. uphold, the, uphold our laws with the, to, as a contract um, as a contract mm-hmm. employee the sheriff's office no matter what. Um, I don't even think our contract with the sheriff's office says anything about swearing in a police chief. If I recall, it's just a nice ceremonial thing to do. So he'll still be able to catch the bad guys in the meantime. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, February 5th, okay for your swearing in then? Sounds great to me. All right, perfect. I just wanted to bring up that uh, you might be ruining the tradition. I think Andy was brought that up today that uh, <laughs> I was, 
my first meeting oh was yeah zoom and my last meeting is zoom uh so that's i know fun. man that's right <laughs> that's <laughs> right <laughs> Maybe that's not the best tradition to keep. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> worth breaking here, Paxton. <laughs> I I think if you have a well, you're just COVID during that time, so. But uh, I I think if we have an opportunity to make it nice. I think we should. All right. Well, let's okay, just. I appreciate that. Yep. Yeah, we'll wait till February fifth. We'll see you again then. Well, we'll okay. hopefully see you before that. But <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Perfect. All right. Um. All right, shall we go ahead and move on to 9A, our ordinance 493. All right, seeing um, we have ordinance number 493 is amending the code to modify terms of duration for the city business license. We had a conversation about this. Um, I believe, Bill, you got the lead on this? Or Andy, Andy. I had to hey, find my... To Staff person that took this on, yeah, which is been right. Um, no, Mayor. So this this would basically um, you you all approved at our last meeting um, the first reading of this new ordinance, and so this would be um, the second reading. And if it is approved tonight, then it would go into effect thirty days after. So um, this is the formal second reading tonight of the same ordinance. Bill, I don't think it's no. This is this shows the first reading. For the business license? Yeah. Yeah, just the simple, just the simple. Because we modified the terms of it so that it could be um oh not no no, I'm sorry. Um no no, that's right. I'm I'm correct. I was wrong. Redact every redact what I just said. No, I'm I'm <laughs> No, okay. I'm thinking in turn. I'm done. No, that okay. Correct. Tonight is the first reading of an ordinance proposed to you all to change the terms of what to uh, the twelve month term of a business license that a business has to um, apply for and get or renew as a new business or apply to renew or just renew for another twelve month period. Um, we had a conversation um, um, in the prior city council meeting, as you referred to, Mayor, where we discussed the fact that our existing ordinance, that this proposed ordinance would change, um, would, would right now our existing ordinance, if a business wants a business license or a new business license or to renew its business license, it can only do so for a 12 month period in ordinance strictly defined as January 1 through December 31st of that particular year. Um, of course, with growth in North Plains over the past few years, we've had more businesses coming in and applying. And when we didn't have a lot of businesses moving here and we kind of had a similar amount with slow growth, it was pretty easy to just renew everybody um, as of January 1 sometime in November or December. But we have new businesses moving in and they're applying for business licenses all different times of the year. And because we have this strict ordinance in place about Janu existing January 1 to December 31, we have to issue a series, it's kind of a weird series of prorated quarterly um, business licenses we have to issue to new businesses to get them to January 1st in order to do a full year on January 1st strictly. So the proposed ordinance in front of you gets rid of the strict January 1 to December 31 calendar year in ordinance and instead um, authorizes the city to issue building, or excuse me, issue, visit, issue business permits, uh, business license permit or fee uh, and fee payment for a 12 month period anytime during the year. But right. they would have a 12 month period um, when they buy or renew. Um, it also provides for um, for businesses if they only want to operate seasonally, this new proposed ordinance, if businesses only want to operate seasonally, they have the ability and ordinance to buy a three-month quarterly business license anytime for a three-month period, but they would only be able to buy two quarterly, a maximum of two quarterly business licenses 
Um, otherwise, they would need to buy, if they needed more more than six months, they would need to buy, they would be required to buy a, a one-year license to go mm -hmm. ahead and buy the full year. So that's what this mm -hmm. new proposed ordinance does. Great. Um, any comments or questions from council? All right. Thank you uh, for the clarification, Bill. Um, so we have a recommendation to adopt ordinance 493 um, to amend the code to modify the terms of duration of the North Plains business license. Um, do I have a motion to approve the first reading? I'll move to approve the uh, first reading of ordinance 493 and ordinance of the city council amending the municipal code to modify the terms of duration of the North Plains business license. And I will second. All right, we have a first and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Hearing none, motion carried. Ordinance number 493 is an ordinance of the City Council of the City of North Plains, Oregon, amending the municipal code to modify terms of duration of the city business license. All right, thank you. Then this will come back for second reading at our next meeting. All right, um, item number 10, unfinished business, um, nothing there to report and new business down to the city manager report. Andy, um, you put together a really great presentation of kind of a year in review uh, with the council goals. Thank you very much. Um, look at that, Chief Haxton playing a little basketball with the kids. Uh, <laughs> I like that picture. But I think he's that dominating. Uh, you know, I think if we if we play basketball, he would be dominating those those kids. <laughs> that would end up playing. Yeah, and I don't take it easy. By the way, they got yeah. <laughs> no verbal warnings to them, huh? <laughs> um, but I no, I, I just want to say thank you. This is a great. Um, you've done this in the past, and um. I think it's a great kind of summary of, um, but it's detailed of what happened this past year. Um, well, you're welcome, Mayor. And um, and I wanted to, and Corinne kind of helped put together um, some of the numbers and an infographic um, to go along with that. So it really kind of summarizes the year really well. So we'll make sure that all this information goes out in the next uh, newsletter for, um, and probably some social media posts for the, the community as well. Um, so thanks to staff that helped uh, help fill this out. And it's and it's a good segue to one of the things that I wanted to talk about, which is getting a, a goal setting sort of either strategic planning or goal refinement um, meeting um, for the city council. Again, probably sometime in the spring, start thinking ahead about that. I've got, um, I reached out to a couple of facilitators that would be able to do that. And I think it would just be a good opportunity for uh, the council to, um, now that we've had these goals for a couple of years, see if there's some things that we wanna take off of, of the work plan. Um, we've got a few new employees, we've got a new police chief, we have a planning manager, um, some folks that have come on board and in in, uh, a new public works director. Since these goals were set last time, it would be good for them to have a nice strategic uh, discussion with the council too. I'm not asking anyone to pull out a calendar right now, so don't do not do that. It would be better to, to do that in person anyway. But um, we're going to have a discussion with a facilitator or two that come highly recommended to help the council really think about not just goals and work plan items, but also some um, statements about the city's vision, mission, uh, values and things that we can uh, roll into um, what our what our city's goals are for the for the community. So stay tuned there. But I at least wanted to frame this year in review as sort of a springboard to get us um, 
thinking towards that. I, I personally like having three goals. You know, that's that's great. It's much better than eight or 10 or <laughs> more than that. And then we can develop our work plan around that. But I think it would be worth um, convening again, since this is an off budget year. Our, our time isn't being taken out by a, a budget necessarily. We're kind of in that midpoint year and we can think about some of the bigger strategic uh, things facing the city in the future. So there'll be, there'll be more to come on that. One of the other things I wanted to note is that we've been talking with um, Tom Holt, the city's lobbyist. He'll have a memo, um, if not if not tomorrow, then definitely this week about some of the legislative priorities, some of the things we're tracking um, for the for the city um, regarding um, economic development and some other things that may affect a, a city of our size regarding um, housing and uh, some land use issues and things like that. So he'll have he'll have a nice summary for us um uh this week as well i don't have a lot else to report i just wanted to kind of mention those two things and uh just uh say you know 2023 was there was a lot that happened and hopefully we can hit on a lot of the make a lot more progress on the goals in 2024 um as well All right thank you andy any comments or questions for for andy from council uh, two weeks ago, we talked about the uh, business application fee that's also charged for first-time businesses, along with the licensing fee. Uh, it was going to be looked into to see whether or not that fee was uh, justified. Um, has there been any, any looking at that? Uh, uh, Bill, do you want to take this one? I know we discussed it a bit. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so I haven't put together anything to look at or discuss yet, but I have been gathering um, business license application fees at, um, I think I think at this point, I pretty much have everyone now, every city now in Washington County. Um, and you'll be able to take a look at it, but the bottom line is that it's, it's all over the place. Um, so I think, you know, where we, we're kind of in the middle of the pack. Um, some city, one city doesn't have one. A few have some that are low, but they charge much more employee fee per employee um, than we have just than we adopted, um, and some charge a higher business license fee. So it's kind of it's something to talk about, and it'll be information I can share. But I haven't kind of formally put it down on paper, but we have been looking into it. All right, thank you, Bill. Um, Look forward to that follow up on that. Anyone else with comments or questions for for Andy? I can. I'll just say I love the infographic. I mean, we got to keep those coming, and I still think we have to think about the one on ones. You know, basic information. We don't. Um, we don't want to spend too much time on it, but we want to give the bits and pieces we need to our citizens to. So they understand how government functions, how it works, and uh, you know, keep it. Well, maybe we can keep it at eighth grade level, but we, we do need to disseminate. It. And like, I know we kind of started that. I don't know that I've seen one for a while, or I missed it, but because uh, I do absorb a lot of information. But the one on ones to me are a valuable piece of us communicating what it is we do on a daily basis. Yeah, thanks for that comment, Councilor Sheldon. We did about 15 of those and we kind of pivoted to other content, but it's always good to kind of go back and as topics come up and there's there's certainly no end. I mean, I think most of us remember all the schoolhouse rock stuff. That's kind of where that started. And there's no end of things you can talk about with civics and, and government. So I will make that a part of the next uh, conversation with Corinne, I guess. One other thing I can note is we're hoping to launch the new website in about two weeks. We've got some beta testing to do for it, but we're, we're a lot of the ways there. One of the features that it may not roll out immediately, but we are um, definitely going to have as part of that, it would be an online reservation system for Jesse Mays that would take some time off of staff that would allow everyone in the city, whether it's a library or public works, remember to always see when Jesse Mays is going to be used and reserved at a certain time, because it is getting some, some use so this will be just 
like when you're res reserving an online camping spot, we're hoping to, you know, it'll have that sort of functionality. So that's something that we're adding on to it. And then um, I, I inadvertently gave out the wrong date for the mayor's state of the city, but I'm hoping the mayor will give you the correct date when, when she follows me up here. <laughs> uh, March 18th. <laughs> So um, what we did is decided to, um, it's March 18th, it's Monday, March 18th. It is a council, regular council meeting night. So that way, none of you have any excuse not to be there. <laughs> Planned by design. <laughs> I, kind of, I kind of agree with that because I've been going to the one over in Banks the last couple of years. And I don't think I've met one of their city councilors ever showing up or some of their committees. And I think it's important that we do support our city in this. Uh, and I think it's important. I think it's Russ hitting everybody in February, uh, talking to each uh, committee and telling them the importance of showing up for the, the state of the city. Yeah. Because I know sometimes we don't see a lot of them when it's, I think it's a great idea for them to to be there and meet everybody too. Mm -hmm. And I shared the information um, via voicemail with Cindy Hurst, the you know secretary for the chamber. Um, we we're playing phone tag, um, she and I, but I'll be working with her to coordinate some of the logistics. But for now, um, I know uh, Andy, Corinne and I had a, a good meeting to do some strategizing um, and discussion. Um, so there will be more feedback that we'll give you, and I, I'm going to reach out to uh, to you on looking at maybe um, uh, changing it just a little bit where we have, you know, maybe a city councilor talking about something. We might do a video, you know, like a short little five or six minute video. So we're also working with TVC TV. Um, they might, um, they have um, put us on their calendar, and then I believe they might be coming out in February sometime. Um, Andy's working with the folks over there. Um, so we're, yeah, it'll be kind of, it'll be fun. Uh, we're going to try to make it interesting and um, involve a few of you or some other, um, you know, committee or commissioners. Um, so more, more information will be forthcoming. Anything else for um, Andy, uh, Andy's report? Any council reports? Went to the parks board last uh, week and it's a pretty eventful. We have a lot of new people there showing up and uh, participating. So it was pretty nice to see a lot of new faces. Uh, one thing we talked about was um, the bathrooms and uh, some of the vandalism that's been happening and the new Bryn Hill is going to be, uh, parks are going to need a bathroom as well. So we just have to negotiate. Uh, it's kind of expensive to have those bathrooms that we negotiated for, for one. And this is the time where they're going to start try, trying to pull back on having that, maybe have a nice green space instead. So uh, I uh, spoke to him about the cost of the bathrooms and um, and the negotiations we did for that. They wanted to know a little bit more about the uh, changes that started from the master plan and especially about the parks, what they originally had for it and how the shrinkage has happened, you know, so they're not blindsided when people come in asking for um, more or less green space because, you know, the housing or maybe making a little strip considered green, green uh, space or whatever. So they're very engaged. They're going to uh, look at that. I think one of them has a little bit of experience with uh, grant writing. So maybe some grant writing help from there as well. Hmm, great. Any other council reports? I guess I got a small one. I hey. did attend the uh, chamber meeting and I think it's a good idea to maybe do that a little bit more often and meet some of the, the people that run businesses. But one of the main reasons I went because uh, I took my wife with me and looking for new volunteers. I think she came up with a couple more, so okay. I'm trying to get more trying to get more involvement that way. Good. All right. 
Um, I know I have library board tomorrow night. Robin, I'm guessing virtually. <laughs> I think that'd be a pretty safe guess there, um, right. but I'll, I'll communicate after the meeting. Okay, sounds good. All right, any other reports from council? Any other words? Oh. All right. Well, thank you all, everyone, and um, certainly hope you have a good rest of your evening. And um, as James said earlier, hopefully no one has to go out tomorrow. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, James, that you have to, but please be safe on those roads tomorrow if you do need to go out. All right. And everyone have a wonderful evening. Drive fast. Take chances. All right. See you later. Bye. Bye. Yeah.